Well, good morning, honey bunnies. How are you doing, honey bunnies? <laughs> I need to have some more coffee. I just poured myself a cup of coffee. It's Saturday morning and I got up at like five o'clock. I had something on my mind. You know how that goes. And then I went back to bed for a little bit. Now I'm back up. So I didn't really get really good sleep last night. And um, I thought I'm just gonna get ready for the day and knock out this video and um, not only will I be ready for tomorrow to post this, my family will have some delicious soup because today we are going to be making broccoli cheese soup in the slow cooker, AKA crock pot. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. But before we get into all that, I just wanted to take out a minute and talk to you guys for just a little bit. Um, I have so many new subscribers and so I wanted to reintroduce myself. Again, I'm Danielle Nicole. I'm um, married to Bill of 20 years almost. I'm a geriatric social worker for over 20 years. I work full time. I have two kids, 14 and 16, Ava and Lauren, and I'm just a busy mom working. And I've been on Weight Watchers and calorie counting um, for the past few years. My weight has gone up and down over the past few years while I do this. Um, I have not kept off any weight that I have lost, and um, that's disappointing. Um, because I feel like I've been on a diet for four years and I'll lose, I'm up and down 12, 13 pounds over and over and over and over again, you guys. So I don't know what's up. I don't follow programs perfectly. My fault, you'll watch any kind of Weight Watcher YouTuber. If you follow the plan, you'll lose the weight. Of course, you'll follow the plan, you lose the weight. But is that is that what I want? Do I want to follow Weight Watchers? Do I want to follow Calorie Count? Do I want to track everything for the rest of my life? I have some weight to lose. I don't have a ton to lose, but I do have some weight to lose. I have high blood pressure, high cholesterol. It is genetic in many ways on both sides of my family. The doctor even said, no matter what, you'll probably always have this issue. Even if I worked out every single day and you know, I would probably still have an issue. However, I could probably minimize that issue by losing a little bit of weight and increasing my exercise. So I still feel responsible for my portion of that. Genetic, you can't control too much, but what I can control, I would love to help contribute to improving that. Um, so to be honest with you, I'm sick of counting calories. I'm sick of counting um, points. I'm just tired of it. I've been doing it for years. I'm, I've been on and off Weight Watchers for years. I was on Weight Watchers when I was small. I didn't even know why I was on Weight Watchers when I look back at it. But anyway, I'm tired of it. And I here I have this channel. I am like known as the Weight Watcher lady in my family. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes I get embarrassed when I go to family events or friend events because I'm like the Weight Watcher lady, but I still look the same. Sometimes I go a little down, sometimes I go a little up, but I'm, it's kind of embarrassing to be the Weight Watcher lady and you don't really lose a lot of weight. You know what I'm saying? I don't think anyone in my family or my friends judge me or whatever, but I judge myself about it and it feels a little uncomfortable sometimes, but that's me. So what am I doing? I don't want to, I don't want to count anymore. I just don't want to, I don't want to live my life like that. Um, it works for a lot of people. I get it. I'm not here to be a downer about it. I'm just trying to be honest with you. So what I'm investigating in is trying to be a little bit more free, be a little more intuitive. I know the new term out there, well, it's been around since like 1994 because I bought the book intuitive eating. I'm intrigued by that because for those of us that are tired of counting or, or sometimes you need, some people need different things. Let's just say that. Okay. Sometimes people need different things and I understand that, but I've done it and I'm tired of it and I need a change. So I bought the book intuitive eating and my employer pays for a few hundred dollars towards health related things for the year. So last week I signed up with Colleen Christensen. She's a dietitian and she has an intuitive eating kind of like guide online. Um, and my work paid for it. I might as well take advantage of that of that um, benefit. So I just signed up for that. It's a lot of videos and things like that. And she kind of encourages you to not have any major food rules, to go with your intuition. You know, sometimes you're gonna eat junky, sometimes you're gonna not. And as you progress and learn to trust yourself that you know what your body needs, then you can implement gentle nutrition where you make sure you have the nutrition. But it's not oh my gosh, I had six potato chips, now I've got seven points, now what am I gonna do? I can't, I'm so tired of living like that, you guys. I, and you know, part of me is like, do I take my channel down because I'm not, I'm not part of the, the gang anymore. I just, 
I just can't do it any longer. I'm just, it's just not for me anymore. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm following a plan that I'm not. And I don't always even follow them perfectly, but I've been honest with you guys about that. So I am going off the beaten path a little bit and reading up on some intuitive eating, which helps you kind of get out of the diet mindset and listening to your body, which Weight Watchers does does promote. It does promote that, to eat a wide variety of things. So there's a lot of benefits to Weight Watchers. And I see why people are on the program, and I understand why people are on calorie counting, because there's a lot of benefits to both of those programs. I just am tired. Do you know what I'm saying? Four years on and off, all the money I've spent, and I go up and down the same 12 pounds over and over and over again. So I need to, I need to be happy. I need to live my life. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Um, in the meantime on my channel, I'm going to continue to make nice recipes for you guys just like you like. A lot of you like my recipes that I chose. I try to think of general things that are easy and that are um, not a lot of, you know, a lot of ingredients and things like that that are well balanced. So that's where I'm at. I'm trying to find some balance and moderation in my life right now. And being uh, counting calories every day on my phone, do, 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 and thinking about it. And when I don't count it, then I feel guilty. Oh my gosh, you fell off the wagon, you know, again. I just, I just not into it. I just want to live. Now, is this what everyone should do? Absolutely not. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a doctor. You should always check with your doctor with whatever you follow. And you should do what works for you. I mean, there are so many things I love about Weight Watchers. I have a whole pantry right there full of Weight Watchers cookbooks. I still love Weight Watchers recipes. I love so many things that they teach you in Weight Watchers. And calorie counting is just like an easy thing that you can do, you know? But Weight Watchers has like a culture to it. And I've been part of this culture for so long that I just, I believe in it, but I don't believe in it. Do you know what I'm saying? So. I just wanted to be upfront with you that, you know, right now I'm not counting calories. I am not counting points. I um, got rid of all of those memberships and I'm trying intuitive eating where I can kind of just see how I feel. I don't even know what it's like to do that anymore. I've lost that. Cause it's always like, oh, I gotta have certain points for this, this and this. And it's, not, it's, just not, it's just not for me any longer. It hasn't been beneficial to me, although it is beneficial to those I know that do follow it. And I, and I know so many people have been so successful on that program and I get it it's there's wonderful things about it it's just this is just me um, so anyway um, I am following um, a dietitian Colleen Christensen I think it's Colleen I think it's nofoodrules.com I can link her I can link her stuff below if you're interested um, and I'm gonna give it a try and see how it goes and in the meantime I will continue with my channel making you guys fun recipes that are easy um, if I have the recipe, of course, I'm going to give you the nutrition information, even though I'm not following, I'm not tracking calories. I still have awareness of what I'm eating. You know, it's hard to really get rid of that, to tell you the truth, but um, I'm not tracking anything at all. In fact, I put away my scale this week because I become obsessive about getting on that scale and it'll ruin my mood. If I'm getting ready to go to a family outing or out with a friend and I've got the scale, I'm a little bit up. I feel I feel, it just ruins me. So I have my own issues from being on diet so much over the years that, um, you know, and I don't want this to um, also affect my two daughters. You know, mom's watching calories and counts and points and da, 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 da. Mom's on the scale. It can affect I have girls, you know? So I have to be very careful about what I do and what I model. Um, so I'm still the same Danielle. I'm just not tracking count. I'm still, I'm just not following Weight Watchers or tracking calories. I'm still enjoying nice foods. I like healthy foods. Anyway, I mean that just I do like healthy foods and I don't anticipate my channel changing too much You're just not going to hear me talking about calories and points and things like that So this is nine min minutes in but I had to let you guys know where I was at um, and be honest with you. So um, Anyway, you guys want to make broccoli cheese soup today? <laughs> um, this one is a little bit more Decadent, I do have one in my playlist. If you're looking for like a low point, low calorie one, it's an old Weight Watchers one, look in my playlist of soups. You'll see a broccoli cheese soup that if you're looking for something lighter for my people that are looking for something lighter. Um, but this looks so good, I had to try it. It's not a copycat of the Panera broccoli cheese soup, but it's some, the, the author of this recipe stated that it's very similar and you'll love it. So it's slow cooker broccoli cheese soup. Um, what you're going to need for this recipe is some oregano, some nutmeg, some 2% evaporated milk, low sodium chicken broth, um, some garlic, salt and pepper, 
um, one cut up onion, shredded carrots, light cream cheese, and they say to use a block of the sharp cheddar cheese and shred it yourself instead of using the bag because I guess there's like, you know, like flour on it or whatever and it's harder to melt. So they said to shred your own. Um, and of course the star of the show, broccoli. And this is a dump and go. So we're gonna put everything in and I think at the very end we add the cheese type of thing. Um, I think it's four hours on low and two hours on high. And um, just for nutritional information so you have it, it is supposed to be similar to Panera, so we'll see. Um, it's six servings, 16 grams of fat, 800 grams of sodium, 272 calories, um, eight grams of saturated fat, 16 grams of carbohydrates, 59 grams of cholesterol, one gram of fiber. So it's like a good old basic, um, slightly lightened up. There are some light things that are here. You could lighten it up more, of course, but there are, you know, um, this is only 2% fat, the Neufche shell is, only, is light, and then this is low sodium. So it is lightened, it's just not super light. So there you go, kind of like a middle of the road one, and if you want a super light one, look at my um, playlist for soup. So I hope you don't mind me taking out some of your time letting you know where I'm at. I hope I didn't sound like I was ranting or venting. I really don't, I'm not in a bad mood or anything. I'm just expressing myself. So let's get into this channel. I'm gonna get it, let's get into this channel. Let's get into this recipe and we'll make some beautiful broccoli cheese soup. I'm so excited to make this soup. I found this recipe this week. I'm gonna cook it on high um, so we can have it for lunch, hopefully. So let's get started. We are going to put in the broccoli, carrots, and onion to start with. We've got 16 ounces of broccoli. We're gonna dump it in. And we're gonna put it in a blender, or I don't have an immersion blender, but we're gonna put part of it in a blender later on. You'll see that. So I know that looks like a lot. Um, our shredded carrots, one cup. Fresh onion. Okay, I think it was three tablespoons of garlic. One, two, three. Got that. Okay. Do do. Did I get it all? Yep. Let me stir. Where's my spoon? I thought. Oh, here's my spoon. <laughs> I told you I've been up since like five o'clock in the morning, and it's starting to hit me how tired I am. Do you ever wake up and you've got something on your mind? You go to bed and you're like, all right, everything's good. And then when you wake up, it's the first thing you thought of, the thing that was bothering you. Well, that's what happened to me. I've got something on my mind that was bothering me. And of course, the first thing I think of when I wake up is that. So then it's like anxiety. Ugh, you know how that is. All right, let me pull that back a little bit. Okay, we've got that. Now we're supposed to add the cream cheese. So I think it's two ounces of cream cheese, the Neuf Chatel or however you say it. Okay, I hope everyone understands where I'm coming from. I really didn't want to sound like a rant. I just need a break, you guys. Figure out what I want to do here with my life, literally. <laughs> you know, you're doing something that's not working for you and maybe it's not what you should be doing then sometimes. Nothing is, everything is hard work, I get that, but sometimes you need to change things up if it's not working for you, and that's where I'm at. Okay, cream cheese, oregano, nutmeg, and chicken broth. Okay, let's do that, and it's two and a half cups, I believe, of chicken broth. Let me just double check. Yep, two and a half cups. One. Two. I always put a little bit more, but that's just me. I'm gonna put three-fourths of a cup. I always do that when I make soup in the crock pot. I always put a little bit more. So we're just gonna mix that around, and this is gonna cook for two hours on high or four to six on low. Do whatever works for you. It's just to soften the vegetables at this stage. And then we add the evaporated milk later and the cheese later, probably salt and pepper later too. I think I got all that. All right, here's our lid. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I hope you're doing a good, having a good week. And for all my oldies, I'm so glad to be keeping in touch with you and all my new people, welcome to my channel. So a little bit, we're gonna have some nice broccoli soup. It's been about two hours, two and hours and 15 minutes because I wanted this broccoli to be nice and cooked and I did kind of leave it in big chunks. So it's been cooking on high in the crock pot. So what we do next is we stir in the evaporated milk. 
This is 2% fat, 2% milk, you know. Stir that in. Oh, there goes my timer. Hold on one second, you guys. It'll drive us bonkers. Okay, there's that. Stir it up. And now what we do, if I had immersion blend, which would be awesome if I had one, but I don't, I would just immersion right now, right in the crock pot, but I don't. So I do have a blender though. So it says to take about three quarters of the soup into the blender and get it smooth, but just a smidge chunky. So let me do that. I don't want to overfill because it's hot and it expands. Get some of this liquid. I am not going to turn on the blender while we're on filming because it is so loud and obnoxious. It, it is so loud and awful. Okay, it's super heavy. I am going to blend this and make it smooth. Oh, that timer. Thought I turned it off. All right, I'm gonna blend this smooth, add it back, and then we're gonna add the cheese and we'll be all done. Well, you live and you learn. I over pureed it. I should have just pulsed it a little bit so it's pretty smooth. There is some chunks of broccoli in there. So you can kind of make it how you like it, but I did not mean to make it so smooth. So what we're gonna do now, I've got all of the soup back together in the pot, put the lid on, put it on low for 10 minutes, let it kind of cook just at this stage. Then we're gonna add the cheese. I'm gonna tell my husband, I hope you like your soup pureed because that blender was way more powerful than I expected. It's pretty much pureed. But I have gone to fancy restaurants where that's how they do serve it, pureed. So as long as the flavor's there, it'll be fine. Okay, that cooked for 10 minutes. We're gonna do a little bit of pepper in here, a little bit of salt to taste, and then my shredded cheese. I shredded it by hand. Boy, was that a workout. So we're gonna put that in, sharp cheddar cheese right in the bowl, stir it up, and we're gonna let this cook for five minutes on high, let it all melt and come together. Oh, it looks good. Now that we put the cheese in there, I'm feeling less mortified by my pureed soup. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is, this is real life, you guys. I'm telling you. I'm gonna let this cook through and melt and then I'm gonna have my husband try it and he'll tell us the truth. I hope I didn't ruin it. Otherwise, oh well, it's life, right guys? Let me check in with you in a few minutes. All right, guys, it's all done. I put the cheese in and stirred it all up. What do I think of the soup? Honestly, it has really good flavor, but I totally ruined it by over pureeing it. My husband's over there having a little bowl of it. And he said, it's good, I like it. I'm gonna add some crackers to it. He says the flavor's there. It's just, I over pureed it. So it's very pureed little pieces of broccoli. So the texture is, ooh, the, I ruined it. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Should you guys make it? I think it'd be worthwhile to try. I almost feel like it needs a little bit more cheese flavor. Maybe a little bit more cheese. I don't know. I, I can recommend it, but I can't recommend it. I like my other broccoli cheese soup video that I made a little bit better than this one. I'm kind of disappointed, but I can't lie to you. I, I just can't. Um, I give it like a C plus. I hate to make a video and go through all of this and have to tell you this, but I'm not that, I don't think it's that good. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, it might need some tweaking um, I feel like it needs more cheese flavor and maybe if I didn't over puree it, it wouldn't have taken over with these little pieces of broccoli. So I can somewhat recommend this recipe to be honest with you guys. Go check out my other broccoli cheese one made with Velveeta. Um, it'll be linked down below. Try that one. Uh, that one we make over and over again that we love. This one needs some work. <laughs> What a pain after going through all this, but that's how it is when you cook and you try recipes. It could be because I messed it up with over pureeing the soup. So anyway, thank you for coming along with me today. It's been quite the journey. We did a lot of talking. We made some soup that's kind of mediocre, but isn't that life though? Um, you guys just take care. Hope you guys have a great week and um, let me know how you're doing down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye honey bunnies.